All right, folks, let's get started. There we go. All right, so um, my name is Hernan Alvarez. I'm the Chief Product Officer for Blue Box and now, uh, now Director of Offering Management for IBM Cloud. My uh, scope is uh, IBM Private Cloud and then now most recently IBM Public Cloud based on OpenStack. So I have a few things to talk about in, in regards to all that. And then today we're doing a session on modeling, deploying, and managing applications with uh, Blue Box Cloud and CloudSoft. Uh, my, my friend Duncan Watt is here from CloudSoft. He's going to talk to you a bit about, about his platform, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our platform and how the two work together and, and develop great applications. To get started, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the guiding principles that IBM Cloud uses. I'm going to focus on the top three um, where it's really most relevant for us today. Choice with consistency. And that's the idea of being able to choose your deployment me mechanism, but making sure that you have a very consistent experience across that as a user, right? So whether you're buying public, local, or dedicated cloud, you should get um, uh, the exact same service or exact same experience across there, as well as consistency in the services. And industrializing hybrid cloud. So no matter how many of those clouds we're producing, whether they're public or local or dedicated, is that they're, again, extremely consistent. And one customer's experience is very similar to another customer's experience. And then within a customer, that's the same experience. So there's not uh, a huge amount of drift inside of that. In fact, there's no drift with the, pro with the product that we're developing. And ultimately, DevOps uh, productivity is where uh, Duncan's going to talk about. But the idea here is, is a guiding principle inside of IBM uh, and IBM Cloud is that uh, DevOps productivity means business velocity giving the developers the tools that they need to be able to build uh, relevant, interesting, and, um, uh, and game-changing applications for any industry. Uh, and the IBM Cloud Platform. So the, the one cloud platform is built upon this idea, this notion that you can deliver comprehensive services across uh, three, the three main deployment mechanisms and consumption methods for a customer, whether it's public, dedicated, or local. What we're going to talk about today is is Blue Box, and Blue Box focuses on dedicated and local infrastructure as a service. But that means that there's really high levels of consistency across not only in the entire, the, uh, the three deployment mechanisms, but also that platform. And there's also with, uh, with IBM Cloud, uh, Blue Mix, who you're all, all familiar with, um, and all the services that come along with that, um, uh, software and solutions, and ultimately cognitive solutions from IBM Watson. So again, those, those, those products are meant to be delivered and consumed in the way that's most appropriate for the business. And so customers choose IBM Blue Box because of um, a high level of consistency um, and operational excellence within our, within our tools. So um, we build, deploy, and maintain the cloud for the customer. So we take care of the troubles of OpenStack. Now, there's, there's a lot of companies here inside at the summit today that, um, or this week that, that like to and um, benefit from being uh, OpenStack experts. And then there's a lot of customers that want to leverage the, the benefits of OpenStack, but not necessarily become experts themselves. And this is where Blue Box comes in. We build, deploy, and maintain private cloud as a service for the customer, meaning that they're always up to date, um, and they're always patched, and they're always secure. Uh, so that the idea we're public, with private cloud is, of course, that it's a very high, high security environment. Um, it's dedicated to that single customer. It's complete control. That customer has control over that environment. They can decide who comes in and when and how their neighbors come in and consume those services. And it's very predictable as a, as a result of that. They know exactly who's consuming services inside of the cloud. They're not dealing with the next Netflix coming in and consuming all their, and all their resources. So really, Blue Box is, is the best of public and private merged together. So it's a high level of uh, elasticity. Um, with OpEx models and data sovereignty um, and cost predictability. So uh, for those who've been around OpenStack for a while, uh, you, you probably understood that we are, or remember that we got purchased by IBM back in June and it's been a very, very busy year. Uh, so we were acquired in, in June and then immediately we went into a product um, integration where we could deploy our products, which were, of course, based on OpenStack and delivered in our four main data centers across the world, but then ultimately into SoftLayer. SoftLayer has 34 data centers uh, across the world, a lot more than our four. Um, so we went into immediately to an integration effort there um, and got that rolled out to, uh, to select SoftLayer data centers. And then in November, we built out our complete GA product. And that GA product converged the best of what was happening inside of IBM OpenStack with the best of what was happening inside of Blue Box OpenStack. And then we also launched the Blue Box local product. So now we can take the operational excellence of Blue Box, which again is 
is a, is a, is a curated, managed, um, as a service OpenStack, and then deliver that inside of the customer's four walls. Again, delivering on that, that overall cloud vision from, from IBM, which is the consumption method should, should be very easy for the customer and ultimately be very consistent across that. So we took the, the blue box dedicated code, code, moved it into local, and based it on a, initially a Cisco appliance, and now we're working with a Pure Team to be able to merge those together. So we'll have two hardware platforms coming out of this year that we can deploy inside a customer's data center. Uh, we grew the team significantly since, um, since the acquisition as well, and then went into um, some really interesting and um, strategic uh, installations with China, um, and then ultimately uh, into Japan with some other customers where we deployed the very first uh, Blue Box that was uh, with Bluemix on top and Watson Cognitive Services on top. So within really a few short number of months, we were purchased in June, and in February we deployed the solution uh, we deployed uh, a Blue Box managed cloud with Blue Mox, Blue, uh, Blue Mix pa pa uh, platform application, and then cognitive solutions on top. So moving very, very quick, leveraging those really consistent APIs and um, and really great engineering teams across the board. And then in March, we took those tools and we built a HIPAA ready solution. So again, taking taking those um, the operational excellence of of Blue Mix and Blue Box and deploying a solution that can service very specific industries. Now, not just going after general purpose IaaS, but, but industries such as HIPAA that require a high level of uh, operational control and reportability. Then we're going into um, into the Bluemix beta coming out, of, uh, coming out of March as well. So now Bluemix, uh, Bluemix local is available on Bluebox lo local for any customer that chooses. So again, very, very high level of uh, velocity inside of the, inside of the organization. So talk about local and dedicated to give a little bit more clarity there. Um, we start at the very bottom with uh, any customer data center. So it's the customer's data center or a soft layer data center. And we can, we can deploy on either one of those consistently. Those can be consumed in either an OpEx or a CapEx model, depending on what's most appropriate for the customer. In soft layer, when it's a dedicated service, it's, a, it's OpEx only. But going into the local, where you're actually just installing inside the customer's four walls, it can be consumed as OpEx or CapEx, whatever's most appropriate for the customer. Again, that's choice with consistency. And then on top of that is the local or dedicated product. And then, and then really what put, ties it all together is the common operational model. So it's the same code, it's the same operations team, it's the same release procedures, it's the same remote management technology, same monitoring, that really ties it all together, that gives a, a consistent level of services. So whether you're buying it in a local or a dedicated context, um, you're getting the same experience, and that's really, that's really a game changer. So we started out with a series of uh, data centers inside a soft layer. We started with just a handful. Now we've gone to 16 or 17. Um, by the end of the year, we'll, or by the end of the quarter, we'll actually be able to deploy in every single one of them. And then ultimately, we can deploy in anyone, any customer's data center across the world. We've already, we've already deployed the local, uh, the local product in three continents, uh, multiple customers' data centers in high security environments, and we can continue to do that. So customers are going to be able to benefit from Blue Box's experience in OpenStack and IBM's global reach in, in the world to be able to build compelling services. And then I'm really pleased to announce um, that we're extending the Blue Box benefits across the board. Most recently, we've taken on the uh, Blue Box, or we've taken on the, the public OpenStack inside of uh, the Blue Box um, team, and we're now leveraging the same tools and technology inside of the public OpenStack uh, environment as we are in the, in the dedicated and local OpenStack. So really high levels of consistency, uh, and really people are going to be able to build, on, build interesting apps on top of that. So what it is at the end, really tied together, is, is a proven OpenStack deployment with a really strong uh, community ties. Uh, IBM is a uh, platinum, uh, platinum member of the foundation. We've been in the foundation for, for three years. Uh, and we, we feel that uh, IBM and Bluebox are uniquely positioned in this, in this way. So customers can gain an immense amount of value from hybrid cloud. We've seen people. Um, really need to be able to build and deploy applications based on the business's needs, um, both in a dedicated and a local context. Very high security applications that need to be uh, well contained inside of their local, inside of their four walls, but also being able to burst out into dedicated or even public instances where they need to, um, uh, where they can put workloads that aren't nearly as sensitive. 
IBM is positioned to, to be able to uniquely deliver this, not only with SoftLayer, uh, top layers reach of 34 data centers and IBM's uh, global capacity to build and deploy infrastructure inside of any customer in any country's uh, uh, environment. And really customers want to work uh, with OpenStack, not on OpenStack. And we're seeing this consistently across the board. And by leveraging IBM's platform, they can continue to do that. And right now it's available, public, local, or dedicated offerings, IBM Cloud. There's uh, Bluemix on top of that and a wide variety of other services. There's also Watson services on top. So customers can leverage the entire power of the IBM platform, not only from an IaaS, PaaS, and cognitive solutions. And then Bluebox, as we talked about just a minute ago, Bluebox is now the foundation for all three of the deployment mechanisms, um, public, local, and dedicated, and this is really exciting for us. So with that, I'm gonna pause and bring up Duncan. Got his mic on. I think I'm live. Yep, there you go. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, thank you very much. So I think I was a bit late getting to the uh, podium here because I was actually tweeting, apologies. But, um, but the, the key takeaway from Hanan's talk is the fact that the blue box expertise is now applied across the board. So when we first engaged with them, the focus was on what they could do for us around blue box uh, dedicated and local in the case of customers. Um, but the fact that they're now taking that expertise and rolling out the public cloud, the public OpenStack cloud on software is, I think, you know, a massive, massive step forward. So I'm going to switch gears and talk a little bit about CloudSoft, what we're doing, and why we chose to run the CloudSoft application management platform uh, on the Blue Box dedicated cloud. So Start with a little bit of history. So we're always looking at the future, always trying to imagine what the future may be like, and a lot of people here are involved in you know, creating that future. But I like to also look back sometimes. And so if we look back to probably around 20 years or so ago, autonomic computing came into the limelight, um, really powered and, and enabled by IBM itself through what they call an EBO, an emerging business opportunity. Um, and that theme of creating an emerging business opportunity around autonomic computing was probably a few years early. But if you now look at what's happening in the world of networking uh, within Etsy and, and, and so on, you'll see that you know, the future of the autonomic, uh, sorry, there is a thing called AFI, the autonomic future of the internet. So we've taken that same idea and applied autonomics to really the management of applications and services. So what does that mean? It means you model your application, so you create a blueprint for the application. That blueprint gives you all the essential ingredients you, you need to actually understand how to not just deploy an application on any underlying infrastructure, but also how to manage it on an ongoing basis. And that's really where the, the autonomics kicks in, because you don't just instantiate an application and then walk away, but you constantly monitor it. You sense uh, its performance, you take sense data from it, and then you react to that and you affect or change its behavior. So that sensor and effect a pattern and the monitor, analyze, plan and execute autonomic control loop is at the heart of what we're doing. So our idea is to take that and apply it to any application. So I can take the simplest application through to the most complex distributed system and apply the principles of autonomic computing to it. So we talk about being able to model deploy and manage any application in any or in or on. I always, always hesitate whether in or on. I guess on any cloud. Um, we'll stick with that for now. I'll probably change my mind halfway through this, by the way. But uh, the idea there is to be agnostic. So it's being able to actually take this blueprint and capture the best practices around how to manage, deploy and manage the application before you, you decide to land it anywhere. It doesn't mean you necessarily start with a completely green field. You might actually leverage work that's gone on in the configuration management space, you know, using tools like Puppet, Chef, Ansible, Sort, and so on. But then it's taking that and then being able to constantly sense the environment. So this pattern of sense and effect comes through time and time again. So let's look at that in the context of you know, the cloud. Well, the cloud is, of course, not the cloud. It's many, many different clouds. So these are just a sample of some of the clouds that that we support. Now, when I say support, what I mean is we've leveraged other work by other people, in, in this case, the Apache Software Foundation, to actually 
make this practical and make this possible. Klausoff's own application management platform is itself built on another Apache project that we created a few years ago and contributed to the Apache Software Foundation where it graduated in November of last year. So last year was a big year for us because when a project graduates, it means there's sufficient groundswell uh, of people using it for it to actually make that sort of graduation uh, step forward. Um, so Apache Brooklyn, JClouds, all of these uh, software, open source software components are packaged and bundled for you uh, in order to actually deliver this cloud agnostic model, deploy and manage. So that means taking this blueprint and running it in Bluebox. It's fine, we can run it on Bluebox dedicated and local and obviously now we can run it on Bluebox public, although I'm not sure they'll be using the term Bluebox, although. Um, but the, the other thing we can do is you know, work with more traditional uh, clouds. So software has its own API. There is an existing software, uh, public cloud, 40 data centers around the world and growing. Um, that number's probably wrong as I speak. So this ability to take the same blueprint, and it is the same blueprint, and deploy and manage it anywhere is critical to what we're doing. So let's look at a few use cases. So you know, use cases vary enormously. I mean, if you were in the keynote yesterday, you'll have heard Donna Scott from Gartner talking about modal IT, which is a Gartner concept around you know, mode one, mode two, and maybe there's something in the middle, mode one plus. Um, I was amused by some of the tweets that said, uh, did somebody just kidnap us and take us to VMworld? I don't know if you've been to VMworld, but uh, it was a little bit of a strange moment there, having an analyst kick off a conference like OpenStack, having been to many of these. But anyway, I digress. So the, the first and most natural thing you want to do is take applications, take workloads, and basically migrate those to the cloud. So there's two ways of doing that. There's the really, I'd say, naive way of doing it, where you lift and shift the application, which I actually think of as more hit and hope. So you're really not actually adding value, you're just trying to you know, scoop up what you have and hope to goodness that you can land it in a cloud somewhere. That really buys you know, none of the benefits of cloud. So the idea is to take, take a step back and actually understand, unpack that application, understand the components, the moving parts that make up that application and how they fit together, what the dependencies are and what are the best practices around how to manage, manage those. Then of course there's being in the cloud using something like Bluemix. Uh, or other Cloud Foundry based products, be it from uh, HP or Pivotal or, or whomever, where you have this, this very rich developer experience, but you also want to be able to reach back into the enterprise and, and pull in data from the enterprise because you're not going to copy an entire data set into your Cloud Foundry environment. I'm sure there are people who would try and do that, but A, there are probably reasons not to from a governance and compliance point of view. And secondly, it's a waste of time and effort. So the idea of being able to reach back into the enterprise to either stand up new services uh, or to connect to existing services is a very important uh, consideration. And then finally, you can innovate, you can have fun, you can just go you know, all in with cloud. So all three of those are valid depending on what you're trying to do. And I think that's a theme I picked up this year um, at this conference is, is this, it is, a, it is a, a broad church, if you will, or a big tent, maybe that's a you know, less religious connotation given you've got this election going on at the moment where you know, we don't really want to talk about uh, uh, you know, a broad church at all. Well, you may, but in Texas, but in general. Um, I'm digging this really, really big hole here. Um, I'm hoping I'll actually get out of the door, let alone the, 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 the uh, state. <laughs> so what do, I, what do I mean when I talk about sort of, uh, you know, modeling something and then being able to, to migrate it and, and, and capture those best practices. It means I can take this blueprint and guess what? I can actually deploy it to my existing infrastructure. So that same blueprint can be replayed and actually I can reuse that existing environment. Or of course I can go with a, a dedicated uh, or, or, or a local version of a, of a private cloud or I can go fully public. Pretty straightforward I would have thought. Where it gets to be fun though is when you're looking at the integration with, I've said Bluemix here, but as I said, we've worked closely with a lot of the Cloud Foundry certified providers. These are all people that, whose Cloud Foundry based product you know, is certified to be interoperable. So interoperability is another key theme that came out in, I don't know if you were at Dom Rippert's talk yesterday, but he was talking about uh, OpenStack as a community has done very well when it comes to innovation, integration, okay, but, you know, but 
the interoperability is still a big thorn in everyone's side. So the Cloud Foundry Foundation have addressed that head on. And uh, I would certainly encourage people to look at the, uh, if you like, the grand challenge that IBM has thrown out, the interop challenge, um, which is sort of running as we speak. But the idea is, whether it's Bluemix, whether it's uh, the Helium development platform, whether it's Pivotal Cloud Foundry, or even Cloud Foundry itself, it's this idea of being able to actually reach back and then deploy services or access services again. And these slides become repetitive, by the way, which is the whole point. You know, so uh, you're taking the same idea, and now you're saying, well, actually, I'd rather work with containers. Fair enough. A container service is just a blueprint. Once you get it into your head that you're dealing with software, this becomes, I wouldn't say trivial, but it becomes much easier to think about. So from our point of view, if I want to roll out a private container service, it's just a blueprint. The software happens to be Docker engines or Docker hosts, or the software happens to be Apache Mesos. But the idea is you take that blueprint, you deploy it, and voila, you get, in this case, Swarm, if that's what you really want. The fun thing is then, having got that environment, certainly from our point of view, can I reuse all those blueprints I built previously? Even if it's in just a dev test environment rather than in a production environment. So I want to quickly spin up something that say, you know, at least a, 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 a proxy or an approximation to my production environment. We'll do it in containers. Take that blueprint and by the way, deploy it. But this time it will deploy as a set of containers. But the same logic, that blueprint has now been applied uh, across all of those environments consistent, consistently. So one of the things, and it's only just occurring to me as I'm talking about this, is choice with consistency is a message that you heard from Hanan. We take the same idea, but do it at the application level, which is probably why we get on, apart from, you know, it's good hanging around with you. But that notion of choice with consistency, not locking people in, is, I think, hugely important. So then why are we doing this with Blue Box? Well, I've kind of hinted, I guess, at some of this. We wanted, and I love that phrase, we wanted to work with OpenStack, not on OpenStack. When we come to these conferences, it's, it's to be somebody who's, a, a, I would hope, a consummate consumer or connoisseur of OpenStack versus somebody that's really in the weeds, contributing to one of the sort of projects. Instead, we're, we're guys driving you know, how we see it should be shaped, what we need from it in terms of networking, compute storage, and all those things. But we want to be able to you know, take it and, and work with it, not work on it. I'd already worked for a number of uh, years before working with Bluebox on the soft layer uh, 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 public cloud. So as a company, we've been doing a lot of work with IBM uh, over the past few years. And so what intrigued me was this marriage between Bluebox and soft layer. And I've got a slide in a minute that talks about the 2.1 edition of, of Bluebox and what that's brought kind of together, taking, taking these two products. But the key for us was could we leverage you know, not just Bluebox, but Blue Box running on Softflare. Why? Because they have this second to none private network that ties all of the Softflare data centers together. If you're not familiar with this, I'd say Google it. You know, Softflare uh, three, three, three layer network or something, or private network, and you'll get, you'll get all the goods. They, they thought about the network when they set out, long before they were bought by IBM, to build out this, 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 this global footprint. And, I think that's really, really important. It was very far-sighted. I can see other companies starting to do that. And so that was really one of the things that I saw as being immensely valuable. You know, rock solid support from Blue Box on the open stack side, coupled with the benefits of, of the software under, under the covers. So just in terms of personal experience, our first uh, data center, our first, sorry, our first Blue Box cloud running in the, in the San Jose data center was spun up very quickly in, in I say under two weeks, I mean, there's, it came up very quickly. They then do this very good onboarding process where although it's there, they actually spend time with you. You get a customer success uh, a manager who looks after you and understands your requirements. And that relationship becomes really important. Um, by the way, be careful when you file a support ticket with Blue Box because you'll get an instant response, not from one, but probably two people. So if you check the box that says extremely urgent, you'll be inundated with people trying to help you. So we've used that mechanism for both the dialogue with the support team over things as we're fine tuning the environment, as well as obviously, you know, if we, if we have an issue we run into. But it's very important that that support is there. And now we've rolled out across three geographies. So Asmir talked a bit, a bit about this uh, just before the, uh, the break. Um, I'll skip this in the interest of time, but just, just in terms of why, 
Why do we care about networking? Well, this is, the, this is I think, you, know, you heard, if you like, the, 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 the money shot from, from Hanam was what Blue Box are doing is now being rolled out, not just globally within the, the, the dedicated and local, but in the public OpenStack cloud at IBM. For us, huge value was finally tying software and Blue Box together at the networking level. So we're really excited about this because it means that we can take blueprints that know how to exploit multiple locations and you know, decide which workloads should run where, or which parts of an application should run where based on any number of different reasons, be it governance and compliance, be it ensuring you have software rather than hardware redundancy, so having something like a React uh, multi-location configuration so you can do replication across, you know, across multiple sites. That's now enabled by the fact that there is a software private network that shows up in my OpenStack environment, whether I'm in San Jose, or whether I'm in London, or whether I'm in Singapore, as a private internal OpenStack network. But the magic is that it shows up in, in all three of the locations. If I had a fourth, same thing will happen. So sort of cement that in your mind. This is what it looks like. So you saw that graphic. So that's the... Uh, that's probably out of date, but that's, that's, the, that's essentially a sample of some of the, the, the Blue Box dedicated locations. So what we did was, as I say, started in San Jose, went to London, fine. We've got two unconnected, but still pretty useful uh, Blue Box environments, Blue Box clouds. But with 2.1, they're now connected over this private backbone. So of course, once we saw that was working, what do we do? we fire up Singapore. Uh, why? Because we want to actually give, create a fully meshed set of these uh, Blue Box clouds around the globe and leverage that, that private network, which is hugely important that we see with many of the, the workloads that we're dealing with. So you know, that's for us you know, the key takeaway. So I'm going to end with a call to action. So blah, 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 act now. There is no planet B, OK? And so. On that note, we'll close with a, a little vignette of what that might mean. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. I'm completely inept. Uh, you're still looking at blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I've just played you a video. Uh, never work with CEOs. <laughs> it was fine on here. Yeah. That, by the way, is, is the thing that kills me when a developer says, yeah, but it works on my laptop. OK, so we just had a, yeah, but it, I could see it on my laptop. I do apologize. Um, that's unbelievably inept. Um, I will now blame Microsoft, by the way, because um, <laughs> uh, Oh my God, all right, so let me go back here. So, okay, so had I done that, do we have time to play this one more time? I think we should, don't you? Yeah, we should. Go ahead, Duncan. Sorry, all right. By the way, just so you know, that's, that's what their knock looks like. So you, you, you never really ever get a glimpse of, of, of Blue Box's knock, but let me try again. Oh my God. You're not recording this, are you? Obviously the answer is yes. So. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6. Five, four, three, 
two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. patience on that. Um, obviously a very smooth transition there as you would have noted. Um, so just going back and obviously now restarting the slideshow, um, uh, just wanted to sort of finish by um, play from the current slides. So I'll spare you the entire presentation again. Um, just wanted to say that if you do go to cloudsoft.io forward slash blue box, then you'll see a tutorial that will let you walk through a real world example of what we've just described here where you can, you can basically spin up, a, in this case, a Mesos cluster and then run the IBM day trader uh, demo on that, which is used quite often in financial services as a kind of benchmark. Um, and it's fun. So, because when you're doing all this stuff, whether it's you know, the infrastructure or application management tier, demos are quite hard to come by. So that's worth taking a look at because it, it's a bit of fun and it's idiot proof. How do I know that? They use me in the company as the idiot to test these tutorials. And so if it passes the idiot test, then it's safe for you to use. So on that note, any questions for either Hernan or myself? And I've lost track of time at this point, but five minutes, great. Well, obviously plan to the last second. We have five minutes for questions. Or you get five minutes of your life back. And I just had to apologize on Twitter for letting you hang up there with, that, with the <laughs> video not playing. That's quite right. Any questions? OK, well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, let's just leave you with, uh, if I can get this thing to play nice. Um, in, what, in about 10, uh, 10 or 15 minutes time, we'll have uh, Open Without Limits with Mark Shuttleworth. Uh, who's a far more polished presenter, I assure you, than I am. So I hope you can stay around for that and also for the rest of the afternoon. Um, there's a great talk I'm looking forward to myself on networking, uh, which is linked to Project Courier. I think I pronounced that right. I sat and stared at K-U-R-Y-R, -R and I thought, yeah, it's, of course it's Courier. It's obvious. Um, well, after a lot of staring at it, it was. And then finally, there's a, there's a kind of rap one, uh, some uh, traditional... Um, uh, beers and whatnot at the end of the afternoon. So thank you very much. Thank you, Hernan. Yep. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you.